Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, Alec Baldwin has been laying low for a while. There hasn't really been much news. You know, I've been covering the Baldwin uh, case and sort of the Rust incident almost every day for quite a long time, for weeks on end. And over the past four or five days, it just feels like the news cycle has completely dried up. There's been no information, no news, nothing really going on. And then suddenly this, as if everything has been forgotten, as if everything is going back to normal. Well, is it? The festival director, Kathy Beek, told The Hollywood Reporter that they, they're honored to have Baldwin as a special guest at the Boulder International Film Festival. This is a festival that kicks off in Boulder on March 3rd and ends on the 6th of March. Alec Baldwin is scheduled to make an appearance on the penultimate day, March 5th, in a, in a program uh, called A Conversation with Alec Baldwin. I think he talks about three films that really meant a lot to him. Now, according to The Hollywood Reporter, the festival director also said, quote, This is our first year having a special guest programmer, and it's wonderful to be able to feature Alec Baldwin, who is a friend of the festival and is very knowledgeable about film. In addition to being an actor and writer, he has a podcast called Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin and served as a host of The Essentials on Turner Classic Movies, a series presenting some of the most essential films ever made to TCM viewers. End quote. Well, I think to be fair, in addition to being an actor and writer, and in addition to having a podcast, Alec Baldwin is also very well known for the part he played or didn't play in the movie Rust. That's not mentioned. It's quite clear not only that Baldwin believes in one's life to go back to normal, but also feels that by early March, when the festival kicks off, he'll be in the clear. But is that accurate? Is that true? Is that fair? In a recent statement, Baldwin said, quote, I'm quite excited about returning to the Boulder International Film Festival, which I last attended in 2010. I think Boulder is a great town and I know they have a wonderful festival, end quote. But a month before the event, when the Boulder International Film Festival tweeted an announcement confirming uh, Baldwin's attendance, Twitter wasn't happy. Elizabeth Ingram was one person who said, quote, Your film festival chose someone who shot two people and is part of an active criminal investigation to be special guest programmer? Question mark. You can scroll down the actual thread. I'll put a link to it in the description. And what you'll see, and I could be wrong, but just from what I can see, the feedback is mostly negative. At this point, I want to highlight three areas that we as the true crime community ought to be aware of. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So these three areas I want to highlight briefly. Firstly, Baldwin has been repeatedly making the point on his Instagram that he's been receiving overwhelming public support. If if that was really the case, his appearance at the festival would be a little, not a lot, uh, it would be a little more palatable. You know, if whatever the circumstances were, he was getting kind of overwhelming support, then it wouldn't be really a big deal. But I think it is a big deal because there isn't that much support, or certainly there's a lot of the opposite of support. There's a lot of criticism. And this tweet from the festival serves, certainly in my opinion, as a sort of random impromptu poll. You know, it's not a poll on a true crime channel where you, you might have certain individuals. It's completely random. It's completely uh, kind of an unbiased situation. It's a film festival. It's tweeted by, you know, this um, someone who's just doing their thing and what do you think this poll, if you want to call it that, shows? Do you think it shows overwhelming public support or vitriol? If the latter, is it fair? 
if there is vitriol, is, is that vitriol fair and justified? So that brings me to the second point. As the true crime community, I think um, the situation, I think we need to sort of be aware that the situation as it stands is unfair. Not just to the interests of justice. I mean, any investigation that isn't concluded is still not, uh, justice hasn't been addressed, right? Any court case that hasn't been finalized means justice is still pending. That's the word. But it's not just unfair in that sense. It's actually also fair, unfair to Alec Baldwin. You know, is he supposed to wait until the investigation is concluded? And, and, and I would say yes, that, that he should sort of lie low and he should put things on hold. And he should kind of cooperate with the investigation. You know, just the phone scenario, one could argue, did the phone thing delay the investigation or did it interfere with it or did it help speed it up? I mean, it's just an open question. But the other side of it is, as, as much as one can say he should wait till the investigation is over, the investigation also needs to be effective and efficient. It shouldn't take forever. I'm not saying speed the investigation up, rush, um, you know, get it over and done with. But also, you don't need six months. Or do you? How long do you really need to check the contents of a phone, to check the uh, mechanism of a, a firing weapon, how long do you really need to talk to people? Right now, it's already February, and the incident happened in October. Baldwin wants to do something in March, not knowing the outcome of the investigation, and therein lies the problem. What is the outcome of the investigation? And so the investigation does need to be concluded and publicized so that everyone knows where they stand. Alec Baldwin needs to know where he stands. It's not fair or reasonable, if you ask me, that an investigation takes six months or more before there's any movement. So I think this does show that those in charge of the investigation need to show us their hand. If Baldwin is found to be innocent, great, but then make that known. If he's found to be culpable in some way, same thing. Thirdly, since the Rust incident is directly related to the subject matter of the Boulder Film Festival, which is films, it feels more than a little tone deaf to have the organizers seemingly gloss over a tragedy that is the subject of a criminal investigation and the subject of multiple lawsuits in order to quote unquote celebrate film. And I, I think this brings us to a very interesting and kind of disturbing area of the collective psyche. It's not just something going on with these organizers. But it's, it's something you see more and more all over. The psychology of this seems to be where your reality is just a convenience store where you pick and choose what you want and throw away the rest. So while we're remembering certain films via our host, we're also forgetting about Helena Hutchins. So if you imagine Alec Baldwin sitting there extolling the fond memories he has of film and, you know, all that kind of thing... Doesn't it feel a bit like cherry picking? You know, we're going to think about this, but not think about that. So we're remembering certain films by our host, but we're also forgetting about Helena Hutchins. I mean, isn't that what's wrong with the world right now? We're so used to getting whatever we want, toothbrushes in the shapes and colors our hearts desire, customized backgrounds, foregrounds and ringtones on our phones. We're so used to curating our own realities, you know, press one button to watch the news. When we've had enough news, we watch a movie. When we've had enough of the movie, change to something else. We, we want a story that suits us constantly. And doesn't that translate then to, to our reality? Do we really think we can be selective about actual reality while it's happening, such as this? That same tone deafness, I felt, hung like a cloud over the lead-up to the Australian Open. 
I'm not going to go into that, but it's also a big part of the climate we're in right now generally and how we're selectively dealing with the pandemic. We do what, what suits us. We deal with what suits us. And whether Baldwin attends or doesn't attend this festival, whether he appears on March 5th and has yet another moment in the sun or not, whether the investigation concludes before then or not, and I think it will, I think reality will persist because it does, like gravity. You know, we may not deal with reality, but reality will, will deal with us. Are we right to feel disillusioned by a perception of widespread injustice? Are we right to feel distrust given the way the rich and the powerful, including big companies, those with certain civic responsibilities, behave? Are we right to feel to be disappointed at how quickly harm can befall someone and how slowly the wheels of justice turn to set things right, to heal those who've been let down? We are. But we are wrong to abandon all hope. We, we, are, we are wrong to become completely cynical. We are right to think critically, but we are wrong to become completely negative. As we see time and time again in true crime, patience is a virtue. Impatience can also be a virtue. You can be impatiently want the outcome of a report and make sure it does come out. But if there, have been, if there had been more patience on the set of rust, we probably would, wouldn't be here banging our drums. But I don't think there was patience, and I think one has to look at the intolerance and impatience and other things that were perhaps at work on that set with regards perhaps to things like safety and whatever, concerns from some of the people, and juxtapose that with the attitudes of these festival organizers. Aren't they having the same attitude to these critics? Oh, we're just, we're just going to ignore you. We're just going to push you aside and get along with our program. So where some get special treatment, some don't. Where some don't get special treatment, some do. It works both ways. And this is why Baldwin's appearance at this festival right now means once again there's going to be a lightning rod now for extra special attention. I think if the authorities in New Mexico needed an incentive to wrap up their work, they've just been given one. I think if there's any question about uh, the public perception of Alec Baldwin subsequent to this incident, it's going to be made abundantly clear in terms of this particular situation. I think we should expect the results of the uh, investigation to be out with really within the next few days, the next two to three weeks at most. Well, let's hope patience is a virtue. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.